Welcome to the Director's Cut with East Lansing Public Library's Director, Kristen Shelley. Welcome to the Director's Cut podcast. I am Kristen Shelley, Director of the East Lansing Public Library. The library enriches, connects, and transforms lives through knowledge and innovation. In this new podcast, we will have conversations with various leaders who have made a difference in their communities. Our guest today is Julie Brixey, newly elected state representative for Michigan's 69th House District. Julie began her career in politics, serving on the Zoning Board of Appeals and Planning Commission in 1998 and 1999 for Meridian Township. She then served on the Meridian Township Board for 18 years, two terms as a trustee and three terms as treasurer. After spending nearly 20 years helping Meridian Township weather two recessions and chart a prosperous course for the future, Julie decided that her hard work, knowledge, and leadership was needed far more at Michigan State Capitol. Julie, welcome to the Director's Cut. I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you. So how has it been in your first few months at the state capitol? It's been a really humbling and very rewarding experience. Um, As you walk around the capitol and you sit in the desks of um, all the lawmakers that came before you, the building itself is just such a rich um, historical timepiece. It's it's really been very humbling and a very rewarding experience. I can imagine it's rather daunting, too. Um, That is a beautiful building. It's a beautiful capital. I uh, moved from a city down just south of here, Columbus, Ohio, that does not have a true capital dome. So I love having the dome to capital now. So um, it's just a beautiful building. During your campaign, you said that education and environment would be two areas that you would prioritize. Please share with us your plans in these areas. Well, uh, one of the first things that uh, Governor Whitmer did was some reorganization of the uh, Department of Environmental Quality, and uh, that was uh, swiftly met with some strong opposition uh, from the other side. And um, my uh, my first floor speech was one that uh, involved uh very much concern for the environment. And, you know, I'm happy to say that we were able to resolve uh, that issue and uh, move forward to uh, create this Department of Great Lakes, which is a recognition that the environment is so very important here in Michigan and protecting, you know, the world's uh, 23% of the world's freshwater resources is something that is uh, vitally important to most of the residents in the state of Michigan. And I'm happy to be able to uh, be here and advocate for the environment at the state level. With the uh, president's recent uh, budget presentation, which included a 90% cut for Great Lakes funding, it looks like we are going to continue to have to advocate and battle um, for the environment on all fronts. And I'm definitely uh, up to the task of that. Um, Regarding education, uh, education is something that is really important to me as well, uh, both personally, you know, and professionally as a result of the um, desires of the residents in the 69th House District. Uh, Oakmus, the town that I live in, is the most highly educated place in the state. And as I campaigned and visited with thousands of residents throughout the district, I saw how important education uh, was to them and, and feel like I have um, been I I felt a calling to serve the residents, and the educational policies that have come have been part of that calling. One of the first bills that, the first bill that I introduced was um, a bill package to uh, end something called the dark store loophole. And this is is, uh, a tax policy that has been allowed to uh, go on that has had a really negative impact on local governments and libraries and schools and anyone that gets their revenue from property taxes has been negatively impacted um, by the this really terrible practice. And it's a practice where a store uh, such as Walmart can uh, come to a local tax assessor and say, um, I want you to um, reevaluate the value of my property and thus the 
taxes that they pay into the system. Um, because I want you to use these uh, comparisons of my open and operating thriving store, I want you to compare uh, this store to a closed and shuttered dark store. Now, what, what many people don't realize is that when big box stores leave a community, uh, they put deed restrictions on their properties so that they can't be resold for what they were designed for, right. and, it, and it devalues them. So they're using their own uh, practice to prevent their competitors from coming in as a uh, competitive edge for their operating m models and um, to, to try to say that, that that's a valid comparison of property value when, in fact, it's self-created. And this has resulted in uh, probably about a billion dollars in lost revenues uh, to local units of government, schools, and libraries, and has had a really negative impact. Our library systems, local governments, and schools have to write refund checks after they've already spent the money going back three years sometimes. So I'm proud to be working on that by bipartisan package with um, Representative Lefebvre from the Upper Peninsula. I was going to say, I know the Upper Peninsula has been hit hard by those dark store Right. In, in, in fact, the, uh, the Menard store that um, went through the refund process caused their library to um, have to really dramatically restrict their hours of operation. And they, they were one of the hardest hit um, entities by that uh, action that that, that that big box store took. Absolutely. And I know you're a supporter of libraries because when you knocked on my door, you mentioned that you had raised money for the Okemos, um Library renovation and expansion. And I had, I think at that time, told you I was the library director at the East Lansing Public Library. And I thought you mentioned that you had a family member that had worked in libraries. I, I do. My mom was a librarian, and so, li you know, libraries have a special place in my heart because of my mom. Uh, she worked in a, a school library. She was a librarian in a um, local high school. Mm -hmm. And um, I also raised money for the Hazlitt Library. I, in fact, I raised more money for the Hazlitt Library, which was a um, larger uh, cost than the Okemos uh, renovation. But both libraries have uh, benefited from my leadership. When I, one of the first actions I took as a local government official, as a, a township trustee, was to purchase a lar the larger building for the Okemos Library and move the Okemos Library. So, that, so I have been dedicated to uh, libraries and improving libraries in my entire um, political service career. I helped raise uh, over thirty thousand dollars for the Hazlitt Library movement project and um, $20,000 for the Okemos renovation. And I, I like to tell people that um, I've, I've raised a lot of money for a lot of different things over the years. You know, be, being in political campaigns, you have to raise money to operate mm -hmm. political campaigns. But I've worked for fire stations. I, I've helped the Rotary Club. I've done a variety of things. And by far, Raising money for the library has been the has been the easiest money to raise of mm -hmm. all of the causes that I've took on because people in our community love their libraries so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and we're um, I'm hoping that we have a champion in the state house for libraries with you um, going forward. I know we've had tremendous support from the Republican side of the aisle, and we would love the same kind of support from the Democrats as well. Um, the beauty of libraries is that we, tra we transcend that aisle. So, um, and we do work for everybody in our community. And we welcome everybody in. So, so thank you for all the tremendous work you have done um, for libraries. And um, we'll be in touch <laughs> um, going forward, I'm sure. Um, I am the current president of the Michigan Library Association. And we are currently looking at um, kind of a flat budget out of... Um, Governor Whitmer's um, proposal, but um, hopefully we can look at different ways to fund libraries going forward in the state of Michigan. Right now, penal fines are threatened every single year, and um, it's just not a robust way to fund libraries at this point, and especially with traffic citations or um, going from misdemeanors to civil infractions that that could possibly 
um, lessen the amount of money coming into libraries from penal fines. The other big thing that we have on the horizon um, is a Narcan bill that is coming to the House, I believe, next week. And it is simply to allow libraries to administer um, Narcan to people in need that might be on library property or in libraries and to hold library workers and libraries harmless from um, uh, persecution if we were to administer that drug. So currently we are carved out of that um, bill. Like We would like to be included like the schools are. Yeah, that seems like a, a very reasonable request. And I don't know if the um, carve out was an intentional carve out or an oversight carve out. I suspect it was probably just oversight. But we do have, um, you know, libraries have a function a lot of times that that works really in parallel with our schools. In in my community, um, Okemos, Hazlitt, and East Lansing, they all serve an enormous school population. And when the kids leave school, they often go right over to the library mm -hmm. and stay there until, um, you know, stay there for a couple hours until 5 o'clock until mom and dad are coming home uh, from work and work on their homework, get some help, you know, work on a variety of different things, use the computer systems that mm -hmm. uh, the libraries are providing and really functioning almost as community centers these days. So it makes perfect sense to me that we would not want anyone in the library system to incur uh, liability from administering and having access to and, and administering Narcan. I know in certain um, areas of the country, uh, libraries often have uh, shocking rates of overdoses occurring in them because they often are um, quiet, somewhat have s some quiet and somewhat private areas where people who um, unfortunately are addicted to drugs have found uh, to be a safe place mm -hmm. uh, for them to go and um, if, especially if they happen to be a homeless person. Uh, so um, I'm, I can't remember the county, but I remember hearing uh, um, an NPR uh, show uh, last summer about a library in perhaps it was um, Kentucky where the um, people were coming in every single day and um, mm -hmm. overdosing. And this is, you know, the opioid epidemic is a very serious problem that we're facing, and, and we want to make sure as many uh, different people can have access to Narcan as possible so that, that we can have some positive interventions and help save lives from uh, this terrible epidemic that's uh, ravaging our nation. Absolutely. It's tragic. I know that um, I, at my national <laughs> conferences that I have talked to librarians um, from across the country and in particularly a teen librarian in Philadelphia who in a four month period had administered Narcan six or seven times mm -hmm. um, because they're next to a park. And um, and people knew that she had been trained on how to administer it. But the fact that, you know, libraries are open to all and we do, I mean, people, all walks of life come and use us and we want that. We, we welcome that. But we do need to be um, held harmless if we're going to provide help. Sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Thank you. So, And I should have said... Um, prosecuted versus persecuted, but we could be possibly persecuted <laughs> depending on who's looking at it. So, And I mentioned, you know, library funding uh, and looking at different ways of, of funding libraries in Michigan. And I would hope that you and your colleagues in the state house would be open to um, some conversation about that at some point. As I said, penal fines, we look at a reduction every single year. And um, I have been in Michigan libraries for eight years now. And every year that I've been here, we have gone um, to battle for penal fines. So hoping hoping things will look, look up and there's other possibilities um, there as well. And I'm so glad you mentioned um, the after school programs at libraries. Um, in particular, at East Lansing Public Library, we are the only free drop-in teen program in the entire city. So we do. We see 70 kids after school in a building that's way too small for that many teenagers. 
um, that are hungry. I mean, they are hungry when they get there. And we are so grateful for a patron and his wife who provide us money to buy snacks for the kids. But all we're able to get get them are, you know, bags of chips or something. Um, they they truly are hungry. They have lunch at 1120. And by the time they hit us, they, um, you know, they're ready for more food. So and sometimes they just don't even eat lunch. Um, and they are at the library until we're seeing later and later now, six o'clock or later. So, well, you know, people um, waiting for rides or different things. But, um, you know, that's something that libraries have certainly stepped in to fill the void for both cities and for schools. And um, it's becoming more and more difficult. Um, They're really providing an important source, especially to um, uh uh, families uh, that have limited resources, they're providing an important source of uh, computer access for young people. And you know, when I go into the uh, local libraries in the after in that after school time dur- during the week weekday, you really see how busy and how much of a community center the li- the public library has become. Uh, there's another type of uh, library that has been really negatively impacted by changes in funding over the past decade, and that's the school library, Absolutely. Um, another public library. So, mm-hmm. you know, our um, disinvestment in Michigan's children through our disinvestment in the K through 12 funding program is another um, big part of something that I have been advocating for that impacts children's access to libraries. So, you know, school librarians used to be uh, found in every building, Mm -hmm. and school librarians have become something of a luxury item that uh, has been cut from many uh, school budgets out of necessity, along with sports programs and arts programs, uh, as a result of the disinvestment in funding uh, by the state of Michigan into the public education system. So that's something that I will continue to advocate for, is increased uh, public education funding. And that's something that the governor's budget really provided a a huge boost to. So for the first time in about a decade, there is a significant change in the funding sources for K-12 education. And what's been happening over the past eight years is that um, the uh, higher education funding began to be taken out of the K-12 through uh, school aid fund. And so the, um, I, I believe it may have begun in uh, the first year with the Granholm administration, but all eight years of the Snyder administration, the uh, higher education funding was taken from the school aid fund, robbing from our K-12 through children's education. And I'm very proud that Governor Whitmer saw fit to end the shell game that's been going on um, with the state's uh, funding mechanisms. We need to understand where the funds are coming from and where they're going to and not be playing political games with moving the money around to make it look like um, you're doing something different than what's really been done. We've had a pretty big shift in tax burden from corporations onto the backs of individuals, and that's contributed greatly to the reduction in funding of our universities, which also provide uh, very important and different types of uh, libraries. And they're funding has been impacted by the the uh, kind of overall disinvestment in funding levels throughout all phases of um, all levels of government in Michigan as a result of the um, tax policies that have really been put into place. Mm-hmm. So local units of government have seen um, uh, you know a 20 20 year decline in revenues and universities have seen a 30 year decline in revenues and all of these these things um, impact the associated libraries that um, come with them. And so, you know, to, to think about uh, libraries being funded from the sources that they're funding from, you know, who wants more um, prisoners? And we, we don't want that. So, right. and it's strange to me that that's where the um, funding source is coming from 
And I'm hoping that as I'm part of this legislature, that this 100th legislature, that we can continue to examine our tax policies, which many residents find really boring when we talk (laughs) about, um, but they have far-reaching impacts. So it's my hope that we can um, look at these tax policies and follow the governor's lead and continue to support her in making um, our our government funding sources be very transparent and obvious to um, folks. Where's the money coming from and where where it's going to? I think that would be helpful for all of Michigan's people. I agree. And thank you um, so much for mentioning school libraries because they have absolutely been decimated. Um, East Lansing has one professional degreed librarian for the entire system which is quite sad. And the st- all studies show the difference that um, when you have a degreed librarian in a school, what the difference that is for both teachers and for the students. So, um, And it's very encouraging to see that money is being given back to education. Um, certainly, that will help with so many issues, um, social issues and our um, issues throughout our our state, including um, opioid epidemic. Absolutely. So, so, well, thank you. This has been delightful talking with you, and I am very excited to have more conversations with you, um, both as a librarian and director in your um, service area, but also as the president of the Michigan Library Association. So thank you so much, Representative Brixey. We certainly appreciate your time today. If you have questions or concerns for Representative Brixey, you can email her at juliebrixey at house.mi.gov. Julie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to be here. I enjoyed it. You have been listening to The Director's Cut, an East Lansing Public Library podcast. 